there is no way that we are looking at history today. And here's the reason why. If you really look at history, you have to be at least 50 years from it because that allows real interpretation. Today, you're going to get opinion. And I'm sorry, I don't have it from everybody's opinion. It's going to be a little slanted in relation to my views, as well as from other sources that I actually looked at. So these are the years 73 to 98. These are the years of Kansas Newman College. It's almost been an 85-year history. We will be 85 come September. You've heard, most of you, that I've divided this, and I've been using the same framework in doing this. And I have to put this back on because I shut it off. And I said that I would use these questions to be the structure. I am going to tell you now that I am not using these in the last one. There is no way that I can talk about Newman University from 98 until now and base it upon these. It's just, it, it's just too much just looking at stuff and offering an opinion. Instead, I'm really going to try to spend my time figuring out how I'm going to present it so that it will be something that you will enjoy and maybe it will be the top things that occurred during that time frame for good or for bad. So these are the items that you're still going to see for this time. Now, I did the same thing. I researched these things, the history books, etc. I once again asked the registrar's office, Sandy Butch, was able to do this. I, I decided 25 years. They're not going to be able to see anything, and they're going to get too bored listening to all of this. So I said, let's do it in five-year increments. But then, there were a few important years that were not in five-year increments that needed to be included. So I included them. You'll see what I refer to. So I thank the registrar's office, and in particular Sandy, for helping. I asked Dana to help make the charts, which she did one more time, and actually delivered them to me this past weekend. So I just want you to know she was pulling some overtime doing that. <clears throat> and then I can tell you now, don't miss the exhibit. I had a chance just before I came over here to sit and read it. I, I did see that one more time we have people who don't know how to spell our first president's last name. It's McNeil with two L's at the end. And I don't know why, but we have a lot of people who like to spell it with one. That's one of my pet peeves, OK? <laughs> I, I don't have too many, but I have, I have a list, OK? But the exhibit is, is well done. And we are pleased to have one of our former presidents once again with us, Sister Tarsicia Rhodes, who is up here at this table. And we will definitely be talking about a portion of her presidency, a large portion of it, as well as years that she was doing other things here at the institution. And a big stretch of years where she wasn't here. So we will be covering that this time also. Now, I want to say something that's not up there yet. It kind of is, but I ended last time the Kansas, the Sacred Heart College years with a quote that had been in the history book, but it was also among the materials, kind of at the end there. And it said, fires burned at Kansas Newman College. Fires of searching, learning, freedom, accountability, love, life, creativity, Christianity. Our world is looking for young men and women possessing the imagination to spread these fires. We at Kansas Newman College believe that a solid, liberal arts education with specialization in a particular field is the best possible preparation for living in and contributing to this kind of world. And for many of you, I'm sure you note know right away, this sounds an awful lot like Cardinal Newman and thoughts that he had. So it shouldn't surprise us that as we now step into the Kansas Newman College years, we begin to see thoughts and ideas that belong to John Henry Cardinal Newman. And so, and, and I'm just telling you, there's no reason that that 73 and 75 is on there. I think Dana put it on something, and I can't get it off. I'm not that talented. 
And so I just leave it, and it's only on the first one. So I, I think it's okay. This was one of the most interesting of our bulletins, and it was still called a bulletin at this time, that came out. And this particular bulletin starts out with 18 pages that are orange in color. And the rest on it are all black and white pictures as well as script that is in black. And you can see part of what I read you. But also, at this particular time, we had a new logo that was introduced. Now, for those of you who have been around long enough to see the baseball players originally wearing that logo, I thought it would, and then there's people here that you don't have a clue what I'm talking about. I thought it'd be good if we showed it to you. So Scarlett is going to help me, and she's going to walk around to the table so that you see the logo that is the one that used to be for Kansas Newman. It's a, a brand new one. It was released at this time, and it was introduced in these 18 pages that were at the front of this particular catalog. I also, for those of you who want to look at it closely on the front cover, you also will see that there is a member of the Board of Trustees pictured there. He is, it's John Carney, and he is the one farthest to the left, jumping, one of the cheerleaders or yell leaders, whichever they were called at that time. So you actually see that too. And this was the quote that's found on the last of those 18 pages. Kansas Newman, no, look to your future. Look 2000 and beyond. Kansas Newman College, where your education is limited only by your imagination. What did they not know? They didn't know that the college would almost close. They didn't know there would be such a rebirth that the college is not thinking about closing and that the college is in good shape. We heard a lot of that yesterday at the community meeting for those of you who were able to be there. Also, I want to tell you that they use these pages to actually give you an overview of what was in this bulletin. I found that interesting. It actually gives you a summary of what you find on all the other pages. And I found that to be an interesting thing also. But that was the first one of them. Now, I, I did almost every one of them, excepting sometimes I grouped them together. We still had at this time, the mission of the university was called the purpose. The purpose is unchanged, but this time the bulletin starts out with a few blue pages. <clears throat> was not the same as those orange pages, which were 18 pages. These are just a few. And normally, this will be the practice over the next few years where the registrar makes the decision that we had some changes. I don't know who made the decision, but would say if we had any additions or changes to faculty, or if we had changes to academic programs, something that occurred that we ought to put in as a supplement. And so the one in 75, 76 did just that. So the purpose didn't change, it was all the same. A few new names appeared, and I have to tell you, mine was among it. And at first I thought, why do they do this? And then when I saw that, I looked for a couple of other names, because I knew they came at the same time, and then I realized why. The very next one, in 76, 78, again, purpose is unchanged. This time we have gold pages. They serve as a supplement, but this time they're at the back. At least they're at the back of the ones we have in the archives. <clears throat> and again, faculty, staff changes, and academic programs. So anything that was a change that's not true, and then the rest of the bulletin is the same as what the other was. And then in 78, 79, the gold pages are back. Now they're at the front of the bulletin. It's almost a replica of the previous one. 7981, purpose is unchanged. But 81 to 85, these are grouped together there. The purpose is edited. One of the things that I wanted to point out is when you have a name change, 
you've got to some way or another let let people know what was the original name. Now all along on the title page starting with 73 you have on the title page after the name founded as Sacred Heart College in 1933 but you also in the purpose had a parenthetical statement saying formerly Sacred Heart College. So I guess they thought if you missed it one place, you'd see it in the other. So that's what you have actually listed there. And what they did is made the decision, we don't need to put it in the parenthesis anymore in the purpose, it's no longer there. Okay, now we're gonna switch to 8587. There are changes and quite a number of changes. And this time, Emily has the book, and she knows that she's got two things. One is, there's a sketch, and she can start out, because she, she knows about this. The sketch of the administration building, Sacred Heart Hall, that we have today, and it is not accurately drawn. I don't know what that filter warning is. What did I do? Okay, well, I think I did. <laughs> anyway, what I want to point out to you <laughs> is, What I want to point out is there is no cross on the top of the administration building. There is a cross. And what's interesting is if you open the catalog, okay, you have a picture and the cross is there. But on the front cover, there is no cross. Now, why? I mean, I can guess some things, but here's what I can tell you. Before I don't know. Now I know where it is. I've got it in my notes and, and didn't put it up here. Okay. At that particular time, by the way, I mentioned this to Shirley. She said she doesn't remember this. Now, you would think that her supervisor, who would have been the academic dean, should have caught it. And that academic dean must have been totally blind because the academic dean did not see it. And I can tell you that because it was me. <laughs> and all along, I never caught it until I became the alumni director and caught it in the early 90s when I go to get awards. And I'm saying, and they print these up and I see that there's no cross. And so I, I asked Lee Reed where we get these. I said, why did you do that? And what they said is, well, that's what you gave us. That's what we've been using on everything. And so I said, well, you're going to destroy it <laughs> from now on. But, you know, I never knew who was to blame. Well, if you've got to blame anybody, I guess you blame me. But <laughs> what it is is an individual, let me find his name, Blake Hopkins. Now, he was just hired to do the sketch. The person who was the, in charge of college relations, where it would have been done out of, was a gentleman by the name of Pink, Pete Moore. Pete really was sports information director, but he also did the college relations totally. And obviously, he had the gentleman make this. So do you blame Pete? I don't know where Pete is, and therefore I can't ask him why would we do this? I wonder if it was done simply to downplay the idea of the cross being there, that it might be something that would frighten individuals who were coming from other faiths. I have no idea. All I can tell you is it's not there. And for years it didn't appear until it was caught and then removed. I just thought you'd enjoy knowing that. And also, I wanted to tell you that there are changes to the purpose. This is a new phrase added around which its mission, function, goals, and objectives are derived. And almost those same words appear at the end of paragraph eight. But there is a new paragraph seven, which states Kansas Newman College, 
sees career-oriented disciplines as part of the educational process within the context of the Catholic liberal arts tradition. Career disciplines prepare students to assume specific, specific responsibilities in contemporary society as informed and mature citizens. That's almost a direct quote, in fact it is, from ID of a university. So it's something that we then start to make sure that this is, is a part of. I'm also going to tell you, I am quite sure that part of this will also come as a result of various self-studies that we go through in preparation for accreditation purposes. They often appear around the seven, eight time period because that's when we normally have our tenure accreditation. So just so that you kind of can realize that that's part of it. Now, in 87, we change to a catalog. So we no longer are calling it a bulletin, it's now a catalog. And at this time, Angie is gonna, sh well, Angie, I'll let you wait until you can show them both. She's going to bring a catalog around that's not going to be that year, but it's going to show you what we mean by Stack Newman. It was an expression used for our logo where Newman was on top and then be below it was Kansas Newman College. And because there was that line, it was just always called the Stack Newman logo. And you'll get a chance to see that. Also, some additions to our purpose are there and mainly referring to Cardinal Newman and quotes from his idea of a university. Again, North Central accreditation self-study process reason is really the thing that's behind this. In 88-92, big, big change. So he got it in big, bold letters there in caps. Major change. We now have two sections, a mission that was two paragraphs and a philosophy statement that was eight paragraphs. Let me explain. The mission really becomes the mission and the philosophy gives you more of the ideas of Newman and stresses that. So that's the biggest thing that you will see in relation to it. Again, this is something that came out of our study and also became a recommendation that maybe it would be a good idea if we would do that. In 92 to 93, there is no change in the philosophy, but the mission now defines what makes a student a liberally educated person. And you're going to see that in another part of this. After the philosophy, a new section was in there. This is the only catalog bulletin that this appears in. It's called Mission Development. Basically, it refers to what is now the Mission Effectiveness Office, and at that time it supervised the Catholic students. I don't really know what that meant exactly. The Art Gallery, the Milton Center, the resident Newman Scholar, and the campus ministry. This was also because somewhat this was inherited. It kind of had come before, but it had never been listed in the catalog or the bulletin. And it's the only year in which this appeared. And I think most of you know that we only had a director, well, it was the vice president for mission effectiveness, and I think that's probably why there was at least a section in there that was there. What I am doing is I'm not doing a good job of looking at my notes here. Charlie, yes? Could you review what the Milton Center was? The Milton Center was a center that actually came to us from Friends University where they had had it. I don't remember the whole history behind it in relation to if, where else it had been. It consisted of a number of individuals who were interested in writing, and they were writing things that were basically beliefs of the Catholic Church. <coughs> not always, because there were some individuals who were not Catholic who participated in this also. There were individuals from Wichita State, from Friends. Here, we had people that came in. We would actually have a resident poet here or a resident writer and would be here for a semester, etc. And um, there was actually a, uh, another person who was an assistant to this vice president who kind of served in regard to that. We still have monies that are left over from this Milton Center and there have been some very good decisions which are now being used to how that money could better, best be used 
on things that we, we would have been had, sorry, would have been a part of us had the Milton Center continued. Does that help you? Okay. Anybody want to say anything more on that? I think it's in a nutshell anyway, what it was. In 93-94, the philosophy mission does not change. Just so you know this, that doesn't change often. You don't really go around just changing it constantly. So that, it isn't a surprise. That doesn't mean there were no changes anywhere. There were lots of changes, and you will be seeing that. 94 to 97, again, unchanged. This is where we find the front cover is a photo of the newly cast bronze sculpture of Cardinal Newman. It's only the midsection. I was going to bring you that one, and I thought, well, you can go out there and look at the statue yourself and guess what the midsection was. <laughs> anyway, it's, or you could and go and look at one of these. And then the 97 to 98, again, mission and philosophy remain the same. The cover is getting us ready for the name change. I think it is. And that's because it has a block in in the old English style. So I want Angie now to come around and show you those two things because it's a very different cover on it and it has just the N. And I really think it was because we knew it was changing and the processes were all in place and officially we will have Newman in which university is added. So I think that maybe that N is stressed. I will say this, it is certainly how I learned to make the transition so that I wouldn't say Kansas Newman any longer. I would say I just called it Newman. And then I added university when I felt comfortable getting that part too. So, and that was officially changed on July 1 of 98. But the decision had already been made here, so you know that. And certainly when that happens, we have to do papers to change that also. I know that we have the papers for the changing to Kansas Newman College is in the exhibit in the Heritage Room. I don't think we have the one for Newman University, primarily because I think that should be in the next section. Okay, does anybody have any questions about the, the mission and how it developed or changed over the years? Good. <laughs> now, here's what I did. I put a lot of information, and I will be honest with you and tell you that my paper in front of me does not even have the right information. So I'm going to have to be looking up here just simply because I didn't want to have to type it in and it was easier to just leave this. What I wanted to tell you is I have changed. It does tell you what's the semester, fall or spring, didn't do summers. What's the year? This time I put women before men. And then we have full-time, part-time students. The total number by head count, evening classes only, how many people did that? And then, how many lived in the residence halls? If you see a dash, it's because it wasn't available. A and trust me, it, we, we studied this to try to find it. Also, you will notice in the area that says evening classes only, that you will see asterisks is saying that separate listings for off-campus sites where evening classes were offered were listed separately. So the information, and I didn't think we needed to include all of that up here, okay? So I want you to kind of look at this, and then I'm going to make some points in relation. Number, first off, in the last talk, it was the first time that we saw men surpass women. If you look up there, when does it change? Men surpassed women as we began this section. When's the change? 79, okay. So, that shouldn't surprise most of you. And I don't know if we have anybody from that area who could maybe just explain to us something that might have happened, but I think most of you ha have known part of this. Each year, both the men surpassed the women until 79. In that year, the number of women surpassed men and stays that way henceforward on. 
the St. Francis Division of Nursing came to this campus from St. Francis Hospital in the fall of 79. That's what threw the change. Another question that I kind of, some points that I consider to be like key considerations of what kind of happened. Evening classes seem to remain small. Now, the asterisk, you know, it will tell you that as such, not all were included. So if to include them, we would be Oklahoma City, we'd be looking at what's happening in this place, in this place, McConnell, and so on. The numbers would be different, okay? But notice that we did have 140, then 108, when you look at 79. A lot of it is what I told you about because of the fact that not all of them are included in that. You'll notice, though, the drastic change when we go down farther. Now, remember, some of these are five-year increments. I question, well, why did the evening classes enrollment numbers increase significantly in the fall of 88? Well, the answer is a pretty simple one. We launched a faculty-developed business management evening program. And the reason I stress this is there were a lot of programs that were out there that were packaged. All you had to do was contact the institution who developed it, and you could have it. You pay a fee, and you got their packaged program. Well, our faculty wouldn't accept that. Our faculty said, we want to control our own program. It will be a quality program, and we will develop our own, which they did. And when that happened, we began to go up in our enrollment. So kudos, really, to the business faculty who stood their ground in relation to that. Another thing, I want to point out to you that, as I said, you'll see increases, et cetera, and then you finally get to the fall of 97. Just want you to know that I was told that the registrar's office no longer tracked evening classes. So that's why I don't have any things after that. They're tracked somewhere, but they're not in the, the report that was being done. Now, Shirley has a real question look on her face, so I'm sure she's going to go and try to find an answer to that. But anyway, that's what I was told. I want you to look at full-time and part-time numbers. Just kind of glance down the list, full-time, part-time. In a lot of ways, as you continue down, they're, they get more equal. And they're a little bit more balanced. So I'm saying one thing you can walk away with, they're more similar than they are different. Also notice, the total number of students is about near 600 for a lot of years. And then all of a sudden in 83, there begins to be a change. Now I'm sorry that you don't have all the years up there so you could see it every year. And of course, it gets much more later. The reason, new programs. As new programs were developed, they began to bring in more people. And that's what we would have. And then you'd monitor those programs. And some of them, yep, they're not doing well. We really need to take a look at this. And do we even continue it? And, and that would happen also. Another, there is a huge increase in the number of students between 89 and 93. One of the most important reasons is academic programs that were developed. A number of them are going to be in the allied health area, but there are others. Also, there's a change in leadership, and I think that that has something to do with this. Now, I'm going to tell you one that you would not even know because it's not up there. And that is something that happened in, nine, in 87. That year, in the fall of 87, was one of the worst years that I can ever remember. And I'm sure that there are several of you who were here at that time who could probably say the same thing. And that is, we had, and it's not up there, 51, 51 full-time, first-time freshmen. That was it. Okay, 
51. It was reduced also the number of students in campus residence halls. And I think you probably have noticed some things about those. We don't have very many living on campus, even when we get more, uh, more residence halls. Opinion. And remember, I said, I can't tell you interpretations real well, but this is my opinion. First off, the board suspended men's basketball, did not end it, suspended it. The coach of the basketball team was the athletic director. He circulated among other places, among, you know, when, when it gets out to one coach, et cetera, and it spreads all over the place, he circulated not to come to Kansas Newman because Kansas Newman was going to close. Don't waste your time. Now, how do we know for sure? Because we got that information from more than one school telling us that that got said. Full athletic scholarships, well, I'm not going to mention that one. Uh, red flagged, we were also red flagged for not paying our bills on time. I can tell you it was a change in the business office and the individual who came in found bills behind the radiator that had not been paid. We were in a lot of trouble. Now, I only know what was happening here, okay? I know a little bit about what the Board of Directors, is what it was called at that time, did. And I know Sister Tarsicia because she was the head of the corporation at that time by being the head of the religious order. Because I know that some of them came to her and they were ready to close. And said, is it worth us staying open? That's why I asked for this year to be put up there. It's not one of the five year as we were doing them, but it's an important year to note. And I'm going to say this, from that time on, enrollment increased. We did do some changes. How long was men's basketball gone? All the way through the rest of this talk, okay? But we had to prove ourselves that we were here for the long haul and it didn't just pertain to athletics. And also some things that had been done in the athletics area were changed. And, and because it involves personnel, I'm not gonna go through what some of that stuff was, okay? Now, I have to find my pages, okay. I think it's okay to make this statement. I believe that you can see from this chart that we are a commuter college, more than a residential one. There's no way you can hide it. I would say that it's during the Kansas Newman College years that we can definitely say that that's where we went to because our enrollment changes all around. Now, we're going to turn and start the academic programs, who are, which are the, the heart of the things, so let's look at it. Well, those were the ones that I was supposed to show you. Okay, sorry about that. I didn't remember I had it. But they're exactly what I told you, okay? All right, this one is really hard to see. I want to let you know that the, goal, the goals of the baccalaureate graduate is clear down here in 92 that refer to it, but Dana did a wonderful job getting them on there because I wanted you to see a lot of this pertains to where we still are today, okay? And that's why I think it's important. So when we look at the very beginning of this, you see that we were giving both the Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, and we had some associate degrees which were pre in several of these different areas. So, and some of them are quite interesting as you notice. But these were the ones that we were doing at that time. They'll shift, but during 73 to 76, there is no change. I found none at all, okay? In 79 to 83, okay, I, I really messed up. What I was supposed to tell you
All right. As we finish Sister Sylvia's time, okay? Sister Sylvia's president last finished in 71. There had been studies that had been made and in that there were two big things that were talked about. One was a change in the grading system and a change to a flexible curriculum. I have to find that page, so just bear with me here, okay? A little, usually a little bit more organized, but part of why this happened is... Don't talk on it. It might be that I just have it in the conclusion, so I'll just tell you, because I, I understand it. First thing that happened is in this flexible curriculum, the students could design their own curriculum. I hope you recognize who becomes the most important person here. The student, yes, but it's the academic advisor. That's who it's gonna fall to. That academic advisor has to give them a well-rounded curriculum so that they get the basic skills in that that they can use reading, writing, communication, all of those things. Mathematics, do they have these skills? So in other words, this was a little bit of a difficult time period. And to top that off, a new grading system to go with it. A student could not fail a class. They could have high honors, which you might say, well, that's an A. Not necessarily. Then you had honors, and then you had pass. Was a pass a C? Was a pass a D? That was a debatable thing too. People interpreted it differently. And then you had what was called no credit. That's why you couldn't fail. You just didn't get any credit for it. So, in other words, it was not a bad mark on your transcript. And students had wanted this, and they were also part of the studies that were being made. So, so a lot of this was done when Sister Sylvia was still here, but it's going to kind of come in as Father Galliardi starts his term as president too. Well, one of the things that happens is the faculty, some of them said, well, here's what we're gonna do. To make sure that this works, we're gonna put in a proficiency test. And it's gonna be the first semester during their sophomore year, let's just say that. They would take this test. If it's a transfer student, they would take it toward the end of their first semester here. And that way we could see, do they really have the skills and that that they need? Well, there were a lot of faculty who were not in favor of this. And there also were some students. And so that's gonna be thrown out and instead, instead of that one given in their second year, they're gonna do a senior level exam. And we, as faculty, are going to write the exam. Now, not everybody. There was a committee that worked on it, and then others could make sure that questions from their area were there to see that the individual would do okay. And so they, were, they had to take this in their senior year. Another thing that was done, and that was back in 75, another thing was added, and that was the faculty said, we're gonna stick with this yet. We're not gonna throw it out, but we're gonna put in a proficiency test in English. Do we still have some kind of proficiency test in English when they first come? Yes, we do. So that's when it started, in 75. So you can now find out it's almost through all the years of Kansas Newman College as well as uh, Newman University. So that was a thing that was done too. But what eventually will happen is in 79, they say, oh my gosh, we're gonna go back and have a core curriculum. And part of it's because even the students admitted, and by the way, there was a student who had an awful lot to say about this. And at that time, he was president of the student body. He's today president of a university on Long Island. And 
over and over again, we've heard that said, that he had a lot of influence. For those of you who don't know, his name is Drew Bogner, and he's the president at Malloy. And he was the one pushing for this and doing a good job of seeing that we get it. Up until this time, we had to have 120 hours to graduate. Start it with the flexible curriculum. Starting with this, it's 124. What is it today, Shirley? Okay, so it stayed the same since then. There were liberal arts requirements. And those are not listed up here, but we did list the other. I just wanted you to be aware that there were those. Also, as we go through the next years, you can see where we started certain programs, where we put them in, and I found certain things interesting. You'll see also, like look in 85 here, surgical tech certificate added. Then we discovered within a short time that that wasn't a good program. And there were reasons that we shouldn't. It's not that it was bad, it's that the individuals who were coming into it were not gonna get paid very much when they came out of the program. And therefore, they were going to be having debts that they probably wouldn't be able to pay off. So we begin to have low enrollments in those areas. So that's part of what, I just put that in as an example of this is when things can happen. There's the business management program started in 87. And then in, in 88, we start with the BSN is now listed with, with the baccalaureate degrees. It's not that we weren't giving that degree, we were, but it wasn't listed as a baccalaureate degree in nursing at that time yet. Also, I, another one that I think is real important, in 1990, addiction counseling. That was one that really took off and we had a lot of students in that particular area. In 92, 94, the goals for the baccalaureate graduates, which are over there, and as you read that, think about some of the things that we say today, a lot of the same language in relation to that. Also, in 93, graduate courses were first introduced in education. So we actually had, before we were giving a degree, we had courses. In 94 to 96, we came with, again, general education requirements were listed, and then the graduate courses in education enlarged. So that was the very first discipline that's going to have any kind of graduate courses. In 94, 96, I'm sorry, in 96, 98, a graduate degree in education is awarded for the first time. Yes? Uh, what was the degree in? Do you know, is it like curriculum and instruction? Or is it building leadership? Or is it, you know? It was primarily education. Yeah, so this, this, it was correct. That's kind of what it was. And then it got enlarged, and there were more courses developed. And there might have been more choices in that second one there, the 94, 96. Okay, but that's the years that, that they actually took place. And of course, that, that's one of the big reasons that we become a university. Now, I'm also going to tell you this. There were people who had a trouble all along with this being called Kansas Newman. There's a couple of reasons. Number one, it makes it sound like we could be a state institution. Okay? That's one of them. It also limits us to the state rather than being regional. So there's, you got to think about those things too, of people, and of course, those that didn't want the change to begin with that were sacred hearts. You had all kinds of camps in relation to this. Those, those early years were not the best, and to win alumni back was something else, too. Because alumni were convinced we were doing something here that they didn't like, and they, at that time, were some of the mo biggest money givers, okay? They were the people you're going to to get money, and we're going to be going after people to give money in the 90s, big time. But it was interesting because they came back and said, wait a minute. What we believed was happening, that's not true. Okay. Now, this has got a lot, but I, and it's all on one page, and I'm thrilled to death that she got it all on there. And it goes through periods of time, and you can see they follow really the catalogs, and there are changes. Now, here's what, we, what I've got on here. The cabinet, I decided to call them that, whether they were called that or not, okay? because it's a term that you're familiar with. So it tells you always that first number says how many were in the cabinet. The next number tells you how many of those belong to the adorers. 
if it was another religious community, I would list that, okay? But I do not, I don't identify if there's a priest involved or that, okay? It's just listing the ASCs. Then the staff, I think for the most part, these are director level and they will of course increase. You start out with 10 and four of them were ASCs. In the faculty, I'm sorry, the adores had 18 faculty members as well as six that were serving in the cabinet or in the staff. Do you see where I got the numbers? Okay, so you see how many there are. The other refer to other religious orders of women, okay? And what you see almost consistently is what number probably appears the most. I think it does anyway, zero. But you do see one and then you see toward the end there a lot of twos, all right? And then on priests, what you see at the top slowly changes. The president, of course, was a priest. We always had a chaplain and very often we would have another priest that was also here. So that's how you would have them listed. But notice there are years where there was not a priest at all. Most of that was at the very beginning of the 90s. And that doesn't mean that that was a bad necessarily, it's just that we're, we're changing and we're looking at things. Also, watch the faculty members. What I did is I took all the lay numbers, then added anybody who would not be the priests and those who belonging to religious communities, although they really are lay, they are not usually included in those numbers. So that's what you have. Look at the change. We went from a total of 31 faculty to 110. You see, the, and, oh actually I'm sorry, that's not just because it includes also the staff that are up there. But, Remember, that's not all the staff, that's director level, okay? That's a huge change. And notice, where does most of the change occur? Where does it really jump? At least I think it does. I think that jump from 51 to 60, then you go to 50, and then you go to 84. That's a huge jump. So it's primarily when? in the 90s. It shouldn't surprise us. We did a lot of new programs. And a lot of individuals are gonna be involved in that and people that we hadn't had here at all because they, they didn't have, we didn't have those disciplines before then. Who was president? Which time? At 91, 92, during that time when the change is academic. Okay, between 91 and 92, we've got two things happening. One is we'll actually have, in name, it's Timothy Desinski, but he actually leaves at the end of um, 89, December 31st. So he's on the books, but Sister Sylvia is brought in for six months, and then she will be handing the reins over, and I think I use that terminology, <laughs> to Sister Tarsicia, okay? So there's, there's where that change occurs, okay? And Did I built- say that Tarsicia then was the Really the driving force she's she it was I have to say I mean her her team yeah. and I'm sure she would say it's her team but also and I'm gonna have a neat quote from her too if I ever get there <laughs> anyway here are the costs well, she has to leave okay <laughs> so have good thoughts on her <laughs> I've already told you the bad stuff so now we're all gonna all go to good stuff okay this is the cost <laughs> And, and by the way, she volunteers. That's why she has to go and somebody picks her up to take her there. <coughs> in relation to this, the cost per semester, and we had to do two sheets this time. I have never in my life seen such drastic changes in what we decide to do. Sometimes we're doing it by credit hour. Then we start doing the block and the block is so many hours and then this above and that. We were doing that before, but then it's so different and then we separate room and board are going to be separated so in other words it's not so easy to just say room and board because you could actually room here and not have board 
that wasn't encouraged, but that's part of what it was. Also, the only uh, fees that I put down that I thought if we had an activity fee, as well as I wanted to show you graduation fees. And just the fact of realizing that once we get a graduate degree, we start having to have a special number for that. And then finally we'll round it off and it becomes the same for a graduate student and undergraduate. I know this is a lot to look at, so I'm gonna go, just have to go fast, okay? And I'm sorry th that, but it's the past and we're not living it now, so. <laughs> And if somebody wants to see these, I'll be glad to send them to you, okay? Okay, these are all the clubs. I just have to tell you this. On the very first one, the, the Student Government Association, something that we've had from day one, but in a different kind of way. At this time, in 73, it is officially called Commison. And I, you've probably heard me say that system of government stayed with us through the 80s and it by the way was developed by two of our board members one of them you've already seen a picture of do you remember the catalog that you saw the cheerleader or yell leader jumping john carney and the other person is our current board of trustees chair and that is teresa hall bartels who they together are the ones who drafted and wrote that plan that we use for many, many years. I have all kinds of organizations up here, all of them, and I hope that there were going to be a lot of students here. I am, would hope that, that most of you could appreciate the fact that, you know, we change names. I find it interesting that it'll stay one name and then it'll switch to another. A lot of them went to go with Greek lettering, and a lot of those are honor societies, some were not. But it is interesting to see and I've got them all up here, or I should say Dana's got them all up here, and I don't know how she got it all in here, but that's great that she did. Okay, now I'm gonna do these fast if I can. This is where I had that piece that I was telling you about, but I've already told you about it, so uh, the exam, et cetera, the, the two systems and how we changed it. I think that this is the 70s now. I've got six for each. This is what I also told you in 75, they reaffirmed it, but they said that we're missing the basic skills, general knowledge, English proficiency gets added. We return to the core, 50 to 55 credit hours, traditional advising and grading systems, two new courses, exploring life goals for the freshmen and the liberal arts seminar for the seniors. They were both very interesting classes. I had the privilege of teaching them both, so uh, I can speak from experience. And some of you might here might have taught some of them too. The name change. I thought about this. Why the heck didn't I put that one first? So I decided, well, let's put it in bold red. That really had a lot of internal and external ramifications. There is no question. When you go through a name change, that's big. And you've really got to do a marketing drive in relation to it. February of 74 is the first Cardinal Newman Forum. So this will evolve into Cardinal Newman Week. So if you always wanted to know, when can we say Cardinal Newman Week at least was here? I'd say you can say 74. So the 73, 74 year, which is the first year that we are Kansas Newman College. So almost right away, you have it. In 76, a self-study noted the college willingness to extend academic service to the community at large, to older citizens, small businesses, women who wanted career reentry or personal enrichment, military personnel, nurses, accountants wanting mid-career education. Degree completion evolved. And we started reaching out. And that's part of what you, you see happening, especially in our evening programs. Now the 1980s. Galliardi resigns in May of 82, and the first layman is hired as president, Dr. Robert Giroux. He'll serve until 89. Major challenges, risks need to be taken, and visions need to be clear. He reaffirmed the importance of philosophy and theology. They were not taking that in the flexible curriculum. 
okay, just so you know that, and that we needed it, that humanities were important, liberal studies. We need to launch a capital fund drive. It was a little weak, but it was there, about three million. Enrollment development, restoration of the fine arts, and immediate attention to finances at KNC. And he was able to achieve a number of those, uh, some he did not. And he will resign, and many think it was because of his health, etc. It was not. I will tell you this, that he had been thinking about it, and he also had already been offered a job. So when he came back here, he served again for a while, knowing that he was going to be leaving before the year was up, and that's when he went to St. Francis Hospital. Celebration of the 50th anniversary, that was big, and it was during his time. It was an internal and an external. Downtown, huge exhibit, wonderful. We had a lot of things that are still around from that. Introduction of the Thanksgiving Convocation, which we don't have anymore. At this time, we presented honorary degrees. Those were the first honorary degrees that were publicly conferred. Prior to that, they were given kind of at other times. Uh, and very rarely, but at that time we started making that a occurrence that would happen at Thanksgiving. Now it's done at commencement. New academic programs introduced, reaching out to the civic and business community. This is the period in which we really started to do that. Objectives for a plan to lead KNC forward, visibility, stronger image, continue and increase excellent and accredited acad uh, academic programs, increase enrollment, higher credit hour production, courses for fulfilling educational needs for adults, strengthening mutual beneficial relationship with the regional Catholic community. These were all things that Bob Giroux wanted to do and to see that we accomplished them. He resigned in 89. Dr. Timothy Desinski was hired and served briefly as president. He resigned 1231 of 89. Sister Sylvia Gorgeous serves as interim president for six months. Uh, in case some of you say, well, I don't know what happened, I can tell you this, that anybody that was involved in it has been sworn to secrecy. It's a personnel issue. You, you just have to abide by that. Yeah, I could tell you a lot of things, but <laughs> I'd carry it to my grave, okay? <laughs> Those I have never given all of the things in regard to it. Some of the other that's around the edges, I don't mind talking about. <laughs> Sister, <laughs> Sister Sylvia re handed the reins to Sister Tarsicia Rotes, who was installed as the ninth president in October of 91. Rotes had long association with Newman as a student, faculty member, academic dean, and now as president, drawing strength from various college supporters of the college, the adores, the alumni, the city of Wichita, Bishop Gerber, the faculty, staff, and students, she stated, and I think this is a really great statement. I believe in Kansas Newman College and its future. And so I have the courage to say yes to you today. She's the one they went to in 87 to close this place. That took a lot of courage. Believe in its future too. And I'm also gonna tell you this, she hated the name Kansas Newman. She was one of that group who said she didn't like Kansas in front of it. Newman was fine. It was the Kansas in front of it. So now I did tell you something about her that she was not knowing I was, might say. Significant achievements, the study and evaluation of core curriculums with new one taking effect in 94, had speaking and writing emphasis within core and majors, a value component identified in each major, as well as critical thinking. A lot of the things that we still have today. Maybe in a different form, but it's there. New program and total quality management, structured in five-week modules. This was for mid-level executives at Boeing and Cessna. Why I wanted to put this on is to let you know that became a model after that business management. And as there was not so much a need for a particular one, we brought in other ones. Whatever was needed. And what was really interesting is we even had an advising council out in Dodge City, made up of their people, helping to guide us in making decisions of what we were going to do. And we started adding programs with other community colleges. Yeah. 
These are the allied health, sonography, occupational therapy, radiological technology. Join our medical technology, which had really been the only other program that we had that was not just a real brief one. And also with the closure of St. Mary of the Plains, the nursing program expanded when college accepted its nursing program housed at St. Joseph Medical Center. We also became recognized as the third largest provider of healthcare professionals in the state, as well as first master's degree is in education. I thought I have to say something about women's sports. Women's volleyball had been suspended for a while and it got reinstated after four years and guess what? We started women's softball. Why did we start women's softball? Because Sister Diane Leary brought her whole program from St. Mary of the Plains and gave it to us. And it's been here ever since. And I promised Jan I was going to say something about the softball. And I would say that our softball program has continued to be strengthened. And as we go with opponents that are a little more tough, it's hard, I'm sure, on the individuals, but you can see their growth. She didn't pay me, by the way. <laughs> Two major capital campaigns, the Renaissance 2000, followed by Beyond the Renaissance. Both campaigns raised over their financial goals. Buildings added, Eck Hall, O'Shaughnessy Sports Complex, Gorgeous Atrium, Maria de Matias Fine Arts Center also completed some renovations and other buildings on campus, increased endowment funds, and added numerous student scholarships. And the big E, enrollment skyrocketed. Define, defying all predictions. Nobody predicted that we would increase like we, we did. A 60% increase in enrollment. That was big. It might even look like it was more, but during the 90s, that's what we can say. And I'm, I stopped with 98. 